Okay, let's take a look. Heroes of the Storm PTR notes November 20, 2017. This is uh, the PTR patch notes. It's already live. Everyone can play it. Our next Heroes of the Storm patch has just hit the public test realm and will be available for playtesting until December 11th. During this time, we kindly request your assistance in trying out the new content before we officially release the patch. As always, if you encounter any bugs or issues during your PTR play sessions, please stop by the PTR bug report forum to let us know about your experiences. There's 10 sections, general new hero 2018 gameplay update that we saw more about in BlizzCon, art, battlegrounds, design, UI, heroes, collection, and BF. General performance-based matchmaking. The matchmaking system has been updated to include a per performance-based data-driven system, which takes individual player performance into account when determining MMR gains and losses. Keep in mind that this is difficult to test because PTR doesn't really have very good performance-based matchmaking. So although it is out there, no one plays ranked and that will make it a little bit tougher. But it's really cool to know that this is still coming and will be out on the live servers uh, at December 11th. Under the new system, players will more quickly reach their intended MMR. Yes, I can enlarge the text. Good idea. Sorry. Um, <laughs> no, you were not disturbing us. Okay. Uh, ga game camera height. In-game camera height has been significantly increased in order to provide more visibility of the battlefield. I believe this is something like 10, 18%, something like that. This is actually a really big one. It should be in giant text because this is gonna make everyone a lot more comfortable. New hero Hanzo. Once heir to the Shimada clan's criminal empire, Hanzo abandoned his birthright after he almost killed his younger brother. He now strives to perfect his skills, as in, next time he meets him, he will kill him, as a warrior. Ah, he's gonna be a warrior! You know, he had all the traits of a ranged assassin at BlizzCon, but I didn't look at his role. He's gonna perfect his skills as a warrior, so a bit of a role swap, but that's nice. Overwatch, first Overwatch tank, actually. And sees the Nexus and its endless conflict as the ideal training ground. PTR note. In order to focus playtesting and feedback on the 2018 gameplay update and stealth changes, Hanzo will not be available for play on the PTR until the week of November 27th. Trait, natural agility. Ah, where Genji has cyber agility, his is more natural. Target unpathable terrain or structure to jump to the other side of it. Now, if you've checked out Hanzo news you already know what he's like but he basically has a increasing channel range single shot pretty low damage actually but short cooldown scatter arrow which does a lot of damage if it first hits a wall it says terrain but they mean walls and structures and then sonic arrow which is uh Small damage. I think maybe they increased the damage. It's more than I. Th it's more than it was, I think. But anyway, it's pretty small damage if you hit someone. But it's fairly slow traveling. Only sonic speed, after all, not light speed. And then it's an eight-second reveal. This is on a twenty-second cooldown. 
Dragon Strike. This is like... And then you have those dragons, you've seen them in Overwatch before. And here's a second alt, which is like Lunar Flare, but thicker and also stuns. 2018 gameplay update. Battleground objectives. The first Battleground objective event will now activate 90 seconds into the match, following a 30 second warning for the following Battlegrounds. Blackheart's Bay, the balloon chest will now consistently spawn 3 minutes after the final chest, during uh, the previous event has been captured. Praxis Holdout, beacon events will now first... Beacon events after the first will now consistently spawn 2 minutes and 10 seconds after a previous Zerg Wave has been defeated. I guess it was not consistent. Dragonshire. Shrines will now consistently spawn 2 minutes after a Dragonite has been killed. And always 30 second warning, instead of the sometimes 15 second warning that maps have had. The first battleground objective will now activate 3 minutes into the match, following a 30 second warning for the other battlegrounds. Volskia and Tomb are unchanged. The minimap will now indicate the next objective spawn location for the following battlegrounds. Cursed Hollow. Subsequent indicators will appear 15 seconds after the first tribute has been captured. So you have a pretty long time to know when the, where the next curse is going to be. I think that's a great change because it will allow you to make decisions based on where the curse is going to be rather than the random effect that there is right now. The first tribute indicator will appear on the minimap 30 seconds after the game begins. Okay. And you can hover to see if it will be Mortar, Frost or Arcane Shrine. Now they say hover over the shrine on the minimap. I hope you can also hover over the objective thing thing of a box. Regeneration Globes will now become neutral if not claimed within 3 seconds. Claimable by both teams. This is denotated by being purple. This is already the case on Garden of Terror. The 3 to 4 globes that spawn from a uh, plant terror. So this will add another strategic element to lane control where if you can zone someone out of a globe you get it. 3 seconds, very little. The time before regen globes expire has been reduced to 6 seconds. So you have three seconds each. I thought before it was four seconds each, but now it's going to be three each. Now I want to mention something about this right now. It has happened time and time again that Blizzard has come with uh, changes to Heroes of the Storm. Big changes. And I would say they've al almost always been for the better. But when you do things like this, you must accompany it, in my opinion, with changes that adjust for the fact that people with these talents are going to be weakened or maybe actually when you think about it globe talents are weakened when you're weak in the early game but when you're stronger you get two globes per wave so you get the quest stacks quicker like it will change everyone with regen globe quests but good early game will be stronger so early kills will matter more, elevating the strength of things like Kerrigan. Because right now you can pretty much say that you almost always get to level 16, you get to the late game, and then late game is like the best late game heroes. You don't want to get like three late game heroes like Nazebo, Osmo, Chromie or something. But uh, that's interesting. I guess some quest talents will become invalidated for globes, some will become better. You can just not go around and, 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 and say, like, I'll collect globe uh, within a period of time. Easily rotating between lanes and getting mass globes. Because Oppo can and will zone you out. Now you can aim your stunts and your damage and skill shots for that globe area. Now here's a big one. Structures. All attacking structures no longer have ammunition. Walls will now be destroyed when connected towers and gates are destroyed. They can still be attacked normally. This is the one that I'm not sure about because uh, they have elements of uh, vision and jumping over them and using them for hatred, keep up. But at least, uh, anyway, we'll see how it works. Tower of Vision range has been increased. 
tower damage to minions has been reduced by four times. Four times less. Wow. I guess that's necessary since they have full full ammo. So it really increased. So just without looking at anything else yet, if we look at this, it means minions will never kill towers by themselves when left alone. I mean, a quarter. Huh? Oh, reduced by 25%. I thought 225. I didn't read properly. Well, luckily I'm reading it out so that I can... Uh... I'm thinking about a lot of things, okay, guys? Like what I'm going to cook tomorrow. Come on. Okay, so minions survive a little bit better. So you need to be there to defend them. But there's infinite ammo, so you don't need to be there to defend them. But you want the XP. All in all, it looks like the changes are meant for people to stay in their lane. Less five-man death balling. Structures have a warm-up period of half a second before firing and must face their targets completely. Structure attack warning responsiveness has been significantly improved. Standalone towers, the third tower, has been removed. Forts and keeps now have true side, revealing stealthies. Minion base damage has been increased by roughly 10%. The half second delay before minions spawn has been removed. So they reach a little earlier, so there's less like zero minion tower cheese. Mercenary camp spawns 60 seconds after the game begins. Oh, that's earlier. Third, uh, siege giant. Defending siege giant attacks are now telegraphed on the terrain and can be dodged. Siege laners attacks telegraphing and missile tra trajectory has been significantly improved what are siege laners maybe this is um, when you still have to capture them and this is when you've captured them helmet camp respawn time have doubled base health increase health scaling increase oh yeah because they were so easy to capture Damage increased, damage scaling reduced. So they're better early game. Laner Hellbats, base health, damage reduced from structure, damage scaling, base damage increase, health scaling increase, and they do minus armor debuff up to 20 times. Minus 100 armor. Three second stacking. So if you're dropping very low armor from tanking Hellbats, you need to go away for three seconds to reset it. Wizard Knight Laner has a spell. Literally the first time I've ever seen this word being used, by the way. So, <laughs> Laner. Uh, Wizard Knight Laner now has a spell. Armor Aura. Grants all nearby allies, which includes heroes, 30 spell armor. Spell armor is immediately removed upon leaving the Aura area. Auraria. This Auraria is destroyed when the wizard is killed. Wizard Knight Defender grants knight, nearby knight defenders a 15 spell armor aura. And the art okay this is really weird writing it says the wizard knight defender gives oh, okay i get it it's really written 100 percent appropriately it's the wizard who also gives the spell armor oh this is the one that hasn't been captured yet and this is the one that has been captured already so what they're saying is bruiser camps you need to kill the wizard first to remove spell armor from the rest sapper camp Sapper Defenders now fires their attacks at target areas instead of directly at heroes. This behaves like the laning sappers. Right. Sapper Explosion Damage now scales over time. Health Scaling increased. Respawn Timer has been increased. So Towers of Doom, Mass Bottom Camping, Mass Sapper Capture has been nerfed. 
Laning sappers now have 100 armors versus structures while charging. Uh, and towers will ignore charging sappers. Alright, so... Towers ignore them, and, and forts shoot them once while they charge, but don't hit them, unless they have been armor debuffed. So if you Hunter's Mark a Sapper that is charging, it will take 25% damage from forts only, because towers will ignore them. Kind of a, <laughs> kind of a weird convoluted way of doing things i guess but uh basically what they're saying is sappers must be killed off by players or they will do their damage to towers and forts zeratul has received updated art to coincide with talent changes minimap art has been updated there's an overlay to indicate when a stealth character goes invisible added a new stealth visual effect enemy stealth heroes should now be easier to spot and the following new cheats have been added to the sandbox custom games you can respawn mercenary camps creates a dialogue with dummy if you need a friend players can then click in the game world to create a dummy of the selected dummy type with the mask oh that's that's nice you can spawn up to 20 dummies nice what's the point to stealth then well, the point of stealth is that you can not auto-attack them. And they don't show up on the minimap. When a player deals damage or heals a target dummy, no, 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 no. Multiple dummy AOE, the combination of damage done. Oh, good, good. Because it was hard to test things like hit three heroes with this ability. Now you can put three, uh, three dummies. Eight second, the dummy will disappear. Good. This will really help uh pro teams test things as well on the sandbox custom game okay anyway more dummy things nice for dummies issue a move command within the mines will it cost the hero to use the nearest mine entrance cool that's that's good right i think that's good Uh, Grave Column no longer reduces the attack speed of... What? It was reducing its attack speed? I didn't know that. Lol, 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 lol. Will now no longer interrupt its attack mid-swing to use an ability. That's good too. And it will now pass through player-created walls rather than stopping to destroy them. Yeah, because you could use Tassadar Force Wall to make it, like, attack it. So you could reduce so much damage between shields and force wall. They changed the rotation. They removed Voskaya. I'm surprised about that actually. It's their newest map. Added Warhead. And they removed Garden. I'm really surprised about this. Stealth heroes will now become invisible after remaining still for one and a half second. Invisible heroes will not display the stealth visual effect and can still be removed from stealth by taking damage. This includes heroes under the temporary stealth effects like Samura's Windwalker Terror on the Shadowstalk. And heroes cannot become invisible while occupying a capture point. Oh, that was so nice. Having a Nova stand still and having a Thrall stand still at like bronze level and just standing there and never capturing it no but it makes sense otherwise you have to comb out the whole beacon point they will retain normal stealth visual effects Voskia is majorly bugged with the protector many heroes can't move after destroying it oh i see that's why then you will now see when hero portraits will now be displayed when heroes are inside the following vehicles. Cool. Ah, it will show who's in a stitches gorge. That's really interesting. Little see a little, see a little picture. 
Oh, that's a really good change. Because sometimes you're like, Oh, help, help team. And then Stitch is like, I got something in my belly. And then they want to go kill it. And then, uh, yeah, suddenly it was Arthas and he kills the whole team. Or ETC and Moshpit. Because you don't know what's inside. Players can now press Alt plus left click Hero Portraits to say when someone needs assistance, to say how long it takes for some ally to respawn or enemy, to say when enemy is missing, or to say that there's a talent difference if you click on the team level UI. Really nice. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, Specialist and Cloak changes and Muradin and Vala. Let's see what they've got. So Nova gets a baseline quest of Snipe Master. With a little bit less base damage. A little bit less pinning shot damage. And Decoy now does a bit of her damage. Just like Lethal Decoy. But a small version of it. Just like Samuro. She has a base standard bonus movement speed. So advanced cloaking is embedded. She has a base instant cloak button. That also leaves a decoy at your feet. So basically just like Kavarimi. Level 13 talent for Samuro. Uh, but she be also becomes unrevealable for half a second. Triple tap will deal more damage. Keep in mind though that a melee triple tap against enemy ETC is still not a good idea. Advanced cloaking will further increase your stealth movement speed and mana regen. Snipe master has been embedded. Perfect shot is earlier but a little bit less CDR. Extra snipe range plus 5%. You have a trait that says you have armor post losing stealth for that famous Nova tank play. Lethal decoy damage bonus from clones increased from 40 to 50%. Uh, oh yeah, because it adds 40% and now she has 10 base. So now it becomes 50. Apollo suit reduce the cooldown of permanent cloak from 3 to 1 second. Ah, it takes three seconds until she goes into cloak, apparently. And then only one. More basic attack damage on Samuro. You will now be able to say which one is the real image by pointing at it. That's nice. Mirror image is no longer a fraction of Samuro's attack damage, but mirror base damage has been greatly reduced. Mirror images are no longer instantly destroyed by structures. Critical strike cooldown has been increased. Illusion master. Reduce cooldown of advancing strikes. That one I don't get. Isn't advancing strikes a trait? Well, maybe something changed about advancing strikes. We'll have to read it. I don't get this yet. Now increase the attack damage of mirrors by 100%. Now also increases Samuro's basic attack damage by 10%. And you can also have a 25 second cooldown at level 1 already to switch places with image. I misread the first sentence of mirror image. Samuro will now appear in the direction. No, I did not. Way of the wind. 40% move speed post or... Uh, like three seconds upon entering or exiting. Uh, no longer grants bonus critical strike damage. Just procs on few uh, from three autos instead of four. I skipped this trade. Where's the trade? This trade isn't listed. Anyway, bunch of changes. I'm pretty much familiar with most of these. Oh, this is called... <laughs> but then what does this mean? Reduce the cooldown of advancing strikes to 8 seconds. No, I see his trait here. But you understand that advancing strikes was his trait before, right? So how can you reduce the cooldown of something that doesn't exist nor had a timer? The timer was two seconds. When you attack an enemy hero, you get two seconds of bonus movement speed. Now this reduces the cooldown of advancing strikes, but it doesn't exist.
Basic attacks against enemy heroes increase Samuro's movement speed yes, by 25% for 2 seconds. There is no mention of a duration. Oh, okay, I got it. The other trait. Reduce the cooldown of image transmission to 8 seconds. Now I get it. Uh, so it was 6, Illusion Master. Now it's 25 pre-pick your alt and 8 post-pick. Understood. Ah, that's too bad. That's a nerf. It was uh, 6 seconds before. Now it's 8. Valera. Movement speed increased from 10 to 20%. If Valera is vanished for 3 seconds... The ability has 5 range and is a teleportation. Ah, so many Valera changes. Feel free to read it yourself. Exclamation mark PTR. Voila, Monster Hunter. Now tracks stacks instead of damage on the quest tracker. Okay. I think that's good. But this is a level 4 talent, by the way. Not level 1. And it's called... Puncturing Arrow. Monster Hunter doesn't have stacks, it just gives bonus PvE damage. Zeratul no longer has Shadow Assault. Might of the Nerezim, which is a rewind of your last used ability. And they added Combo Slash to it as a passive. Activate to duplicate the last ability cast. They deal less damage. No talents. Default Vorpal Blade, 25% move speed while stealthed, regen globe need less. And a bunch of other things, but I don't really play Zara. Some damage changes. Mostly he has more teleportations and he's going to be very neutral in the, in the next uh, patch. Spawn Locust. Health increased. Standard health increase. And another small little ABBA buff. Uh, but less in the trait. And Mule no longer refills structure ammo because there isn't any. It's a sabotage. More damage, no structure ammo removal. Sledgehammer, no ammo removal. Artanis' prices have been reduced. Hanzo, Heroic Bundle, Winterville, Winterville Classic. New announcer, Hanzo. Kinoko, Sora, Dragon Demon, Fart Strider. I'm gonna get Fart Strider, Hanzo. Genji, blah blah. Bunch of new skins, cool. Some new mounts. Bug fixes. Karazim's upper body is now animated dur correctly during his dizzy animation. The Shroud of the Dead King talent will now correctly play an animation and the sound when activated. Monkey King Samuro's model will no longer exhibit flickering during hero select. But the real question is, will he keep laughing? Impressive, am I not? <laughs> he kept laughing like that. <laughs> Fix an issue causing Balog to cast superfluous shadows on the terrain. Fixed an issue that could prevent temple lasers from appearing correctly on the minimap. Ariel's blinding flash, no longer blind structures. Headless horseman boss, no longer incorrectly is categorized as a monster. Fixed an issue in which heroes on the outer edge of the Hall of Storms would not receive healing or protection. Life binder is no longer interrupted during the transition. Shadow charge could do multiple. Oh, I have you guys seen this? Diablo, like, he charged someone through a wall and procced, like, infinity times. I saw this on stream. Someone took, like, 6,000 damage from one charge. Casting Wrecking Ball and Mercs will no longer cause them to leash while in combat. Movement caused by a conveyor belt will no longer cancel rate of destruction channeling. <laughs> the power of Ice Grand talent will now correctly grant bonus spell power for enemy heroes. Slap my chains or chains of ice. 
And Zay's Vengeance Arc and Orb tooltips have been updated to clarify that bonus damage functionality, damage amounts have not been changed. Second opinion talent will now correctly grant cooldown reduction when one of the heroes struck by displacement grenade is piloting a vehicle. Happy Garden Terror. Ah. One vehicle, one enemy hero also gives CDR. Sometimes she could cast Leaping Strike over some, but not all allies. Creating a portal entrance after learning portal mastery and then entering Triglav will no longer prevent him from using the portal protector's abilities. Learning reverb no longer incorrectly updates the attack speed slow. Spawn egg with the egg hunt talent can now be cast correctly on Volskaya foundry conveyor belts. <laughs> Fortification camp turret now displays a turret icon in the death recap screen. Jeruxus says... Nice. Run, you fools. Right on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the level is so high in this game. Get dwarf toss range. 